What's your next one? Um, transfers, mm -hmm. death, and will. Oh, the next one's actually Harry Carey. Okay, and okay. we'll get both of those over there. Bed wheelchair. Bed wheelchair. Okay. Bed wheel chair. Bed wheel chair. okay. okay. Agnes, I know you're tired of seeing me, but um, we got to get out of here. Okay. We'll in a wheelchair. Okay. All right. The this is what the instructions say. This is the little scenario. Of the instructions going back to what you asked earlier. It says something about um, you need to assist this patient to get from the bed to the wheelchair. They need assistance to stand. They need assistance to stand and to pivot. And after you get them up in the wheelchair, they are going to remain in their room. So it's like you're getting them up in the wheelchair for them to sit there and watch the stories or sit there and listen to the radio or whatever. But they're going to stay in their room. You're not going to go push them in the hall or the activity room. The reason why they say to stay in your room is because they want to see the candidate give them this. So that's the reason why they say, stay in your room so that when they say stay in your room they, they're looking for them to give them the call back. okay all right miss beth um check this bed here be sure we all safe and secure and we are and i'm going to place my chair and notice it says at the head pointing toward the foot or the foot pointing toward the head. And that's the clarification that has been made that was changed. Um, before we didn't have that clarification, but we have it now, so that's helpful. And as far as which way to do it in real life, you do it according to the patient. You're going to get them out on their strong side. Um, and you've taught your kids that, but for testing, you put that wheelchair where you have the least intrusion of other furniture and if you have to move a chair or if you have to move something tell them to do it it's their test do it clear it out so they can get that chair where they want it um now see i could put it there and have it facing that way and then it wouldn't be in the way of this and if i was being tested that's what i would do but since y'all are watching i'm going to do it over here so i'm going to get this bit this um, chair squared away. All right. Alongside, circle that word, the bed. Alongside the bed means next to the bed. It doesn't mean sit it out here and take two or three steps to get to it. They shouldn't have to step to get to it. They should have to stand, pivot, sit. Um, I remember one time I was testing in Goldsboro and they keep all their wheelchairs and scales in the middle of the room and it's a huge testing room. And we were on this particular skill one day and, and I had just read the scenario. I read it very slowly, reread it. They picked them up, got the shoes on them and they walked them all the <laughs> way to the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, what part of that didn't you understand? <laughs> And if they'd have studied their skills, they would have known what that meant. This is not the same as the ambulation skill. This is separate. So they're not walking them here. Therefore, the chair's got to be where? Alongside. Either the head at the head pointing down or at this point down here pointing up here. It don't make no difference. Um, they have to raise these foot rests to get them up out of the way. And since this has a swing leg, I'm going to take advantage of that and swing it out of the way. Do I have to? No, it didn't say that. But um, to make this skill go better, I'm going to do that. And, but I don't want to get it too far from the bed because I want to get the kudo points from being alongside the bed. Okay, we have to come to an agreement here. <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to let it roll right there. And I'm gonna, oh, I can't lock it with that there. Okay, never mind. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the daggone thing off. I've been taught how to do that. I'm gonna take it off. That's what I'm gonna do. 
then I'll get my kudo points for being alongside the bed and locking it. So I got my chair locked and I got my bed locked. And if you teach them to keep these two things in their brain, lock bed, lock chair, lock chair, lock bed, if they hook them together in their brain, they won't forget either one of them. Okay, let's get this out of the way. I don't like that either. Missy, let me help you sit up. All right, scoot to the edge of the bed and swing your legs around. Very good. Now let's put your shoes on. All right, let's get, come to the edge of the bed for me. Bring your hips to the edge and your feet flat. Feet flat? Mm -hmm. Feet flat's where it's at. What does stable mean? How do you interpret stable? Touch. Touch it. All right. We're going to get this gate built on. Oh, it should be already adjusted because you can get on multiple times today. Oh, kiddo. Remember when you're teaching them, tell them to check for boobs and tubes. <laughs> when they go to test, they don't have to worry about that. But you don't want to squish a pendulous breast in there and you don't want to put it on top of a tube. You see, I've already gone teaching. Just chunk what I said. Okay. Got my leg up in here getting real personal. <laughs> But we're touching. All right. You said upside on either side. Plan. On the count of three, Miss Beth, mm -hmm. you're going to push with your hands all against the bed. Push with your legs and lean forward. Okay. On three. All right? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. All right. Yeah. <laughs> She's very close. We're very secure. <laughs> Let's turn around. Mm -hmm. All right, back up until your legs hit the chair. Oh, let me take a peek. I'm looking. Do you see me looking, Miss Evaluator? I am looking to see that their legs are against the chair. All right, on three, mm -hmm. I want you to reach back for your chair, stick your butt out, lean forward, and sit. One, two, three. Stick your butt out, reach for the chair. There you go. Now, let me check your back to be sure your buttocks are in that chair well, and they are. I don't know what this is, but it belongs to Thank you. you. Um, and let's swing this around. Let me see your little foot there. Foot rest down. Foot supported. Oh, y'all, I have to stop and tell you a story. You know, I told you Susan Leonard from Rocky Mountain is going to do a thing at summer conference. She told me a story the other day. It was not a story. It was a true event where, for some reason, the caregiver and the patient was dropped off at what they thought was the correct doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And they were going to drop others off at other places. You know, everybody had an attendant. And it was closed or it had a moved sign or something. Anyway, the caregiver had to push the client down about a block. Well, that's no real crime. You know, that's been done before. I remember pushing my mother from my step, I mean my mother-in-law from uh, Autumn Care down to Wendy's, and that was a big outing. But what happened, what happened was, <laughs> instead of putting the foot on the footrest like this, there was no foot on the footrest. The toes were dragging. <gasps> oh my gosh. So by the time they got a block down, the toes were denuded. Mm. And we think, these are such simple steps. This is just beneath me. No, it's not. What we think is simple can wind up being not so simple unless we transfer that knowledge to our kids. This is a step in the skill that they must put the foot on the footrest for good reason. Because they will drag them. Um, and since... I did the little flipping thing. I'm going to have to unlock her so I can get her leg back on there. If they want to take that leg off, that's fine, but they sure want to put it back on because what have they got to do? Put the foot on the footrest, right? All 
All right, ladybug. And you know, let me get your calf going on here too. Okay, foot's on the footrest. I'm gonna leave her in her room, so I'm gonna take this gate belt off. That's part of one of the steps, that's part two. And I need to give her a call bell because she's going to stay up in here and watch y'all. <laughs> and I think I remember discussing it, but I would have pulled the curtain, um, mm -hmm. but I didn't so y'all could see. But if I was really doing it, I would have done it on that side just so I wouldn't have this interruption. But you're going to undo your privacy. You got your call bell, your feet are on your feet rest. Um, I'm going to put my gate belt up here on the table back where I got it, and I'm going to wash my hands, and I'm done with that skew. Now, does it say anything about locking that chair? Does it say? So it doesn't matter. You're going to have patients that can reel themselves around that room. She might want to wheel herself over there and get her snuff, or she might want to wheel herself over there and get her iPad. That's what we're going to be going to get. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that part doesn't matter because it doesn't say, so it doesn't matter. But it does matter that it's locked when they make that transfer. I had to unlock it in order to get my leg back on and all that stuff. Okay, where do you see landmines? There's a bunch of them in this one. Where do you see them? Well, of course, making sure things are locked. Yes, sir. Get that. But if they will hook, lock bed, lock chair. If they'll hook those two together, just in their mind, tell them to hook them together. Lock bed, lock chair, lock bed, lock chair. Lock chair, lock bed. It don't matter, but get them both. Mm -hmm. Another one? We'll turn next to the bed. Yes. I'm seeing that done incorrectly more and more. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, some people are putting it at a 45 degree angle. I think there's some old textbooks that show it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but for minimal confidence, we want the bed, you, we want the chair as close to the bed as physically possible because they're not physical therapists. They're not trying to help them um, therapeutically in the sense of gaining something. They're just trying to maintain. So bed, chair next to the bed, and that is something I'm seeing a lot of. Okay, what's another one? Feet, feet, feet flat, be sure you got your shoes on. Yes, yes, yes. Legs touching back the wheelchair. Legs touching back. Actually read that for me, Amy, what it says, because there's two pieces of that step. Uh, it says, assist client to turn to stand in front of the wheelchair with the back of the client's legs against the wheelchair. Okay. Then the one the about thing. the hip thing. Oh, the hips. Um, mm -hmm. Positions client with hips touching the back of the wheelchair and transfer belt is removed. That's it. I knew there was two parts to that. So if they take the gate belt off, but they don't check to see if the hips are in the back, do they get credit? No. Mm -hmm. No. They have to do both. Y'all good with that one? Mm -hmm. Cool. What's your next one? That's it. That is Half, one care. Half care and peri care. Okay. Now I think knocking, but it's not listed. Is that just ingrained? It's just or ingrained. They, they don't have they to. Don't have to okay. But I have an idea the way y'all have taught them if they did it. It would probably go, it would probably smooth, it would just go better. For them. Makes it flow better. Makes it flow. Okay. If it makes it flow for your kids, tell them to do it if it don't. Okay. Did it matter in the shoulder uh, range of motion how far up they were sitting? Do we need, I think she was like, um, I don't know, maybe about 45 degree angle. Does it matter? Um, flat. Flat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it say, does it say supine position? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be a, so they really need to be flat, supine. Sometimes they'll try to do it with them sitting on the side of the bed. And, you know, if you need range of motion, you can, you know what I'm saying? Does it say supine? No, I don't think so. Does it say? Okay. Yeah, I would just keep them supine. That would be easier to do it that way. Yeah. 